Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this video we're going to go over the basics of using city plans so you can give control of your settlements to your settlers and allow them to build the entire thing for you. All right, now before we start, there's two important things to cover. One is that if you haven't watched the quick start video for Sim Settlements and you're new to the mud, you're going to want to watch at least the first couple of minutes of that or head to the wiki at simsettlements.com and read about how you get the city manager's holotape, which will let you get the mod actually started in your game. The other thing to note is that if you're new, again, if you're new to city plans, you're going to want to have either Rise of the Commonwealth or the Sim Settlements 3-in-1 version installed as the city plans are actually part of those mods and not included with the core of Sim Settlements. So make sure you've got one of those or you're going to have a bad time. Now, in the future, once you get used to the system, if you want to switch over to using community city plans, you'll probably have enough information and knowledge to do so. But to get started, it's easiest to use, just use one of those. Now, in Rise of the Commonwealth and 3 and 1, you do have city plans for pretty much every Bethesda made settlement in the vanilla game and the DLC, with the exceptions of Spectacle Island and Boston Airport. So choose any settlement but those two to get started with, and as long as you've got Rise of the Commonwealth or the 3 and 1 installed, everything that I show you here should work. All right, so once you're all set, you're sure you've got the city manager holotape activated and you're running ROTC or 3-in-1, you're going to want to build yourself a city planner's desk. And now this can be found under either the Sim Settlements furniture menu if you have the mod settlement menu manager installed. And if you don't have that mod, you should find it under the crafting section. Now shortly after you build that, a few items will appear on the table, one of which is this blueprint, which if you hover over it, it will say city plan. So we're going to click on that and go to manage. Now, when you first do this, you're going to be prompted and you can learn more about it from within the game, though, because you're watching this video, you can go ahead and skip that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to select city plan, and this will prompt you with a container listing all of the city plans that are available. Now, the ones that are part of Rise of the Commonwealth and the three in one will be prefixed with ROTC. Now, if you have any community ones, those will also show up in this list and you can choose which one you want. So we're going to choose the ROTC one and you'll get a message box telling you information about it, about who designed it, uh, the name of it, and right underneath the name of it, you'll see a really short description about what you can expect from this particular design. For Rise of the Commonwealth, we tend to describe them in an immersive way. Some of the community ones, you might find specific information, such as the number of settlers they support or things like that. So then you're going to choose the use this plan option and then just close the container. Now, shortly after that, you're going to get a prompt that says, without a leader, the settlers of that settlement won't build anything. So this is based on the default options if you chose the city builder option during the startup wizard. So if you didn't choose that, you might get a different, you might not get this right away. And there's also a method to turn off this leader system. Now, I'm not going to go in depth in the leaders right now. That will be covered in a future video. But no, the idea behind leaders is a balanced thing. It's to make it so that you're not getting everything for free. And generally in the base of of some settlements and rise of the commonwealth the idea is you assign one of your companions to operate the settlement for you and they're in charge of managing all the building and then as long as you want that city to be building up on its own you basically can't be using that companion so it's kind of a balance thing but if you don't like that you actually can turn it off and i'll show you that in a moment but first we're going to go ahead and assign somebody so you can see what that interface looks like So what will happen next is a prompt will sh pop up showing you one of the leaders available, so one of your companions, and it will have their name and then a description of their traits, which again, I'll cover in a future video, and it will allow you to go through and cycle through them. Now, most of the companions in the DLC and vanilla game are all covered in Rise of the Commonwealth without you needing any add-on packs installed. If you're using any third-party companions, you will need a special city leader card for them, which are provided by add-on packs. Again, I'll talk about that stuff more in a leader focused video. So for now, we're going to just grab the first one and you essentially just choose to cycle through them. And when you find the one you like, you choose make leader. So once you have a leader installed in your settlement, that person will come running over to the settlement from wherever they are at some point. But in the meantime, you're going to get this prompt. And essentially what it's doing is warning you that anything that's built in the settlement currently can be destroyed and will be. So here's your last chance to turn around. If you choose no, never mind, it will act like you never actually activated any of this and none of those things will happen. If instead you use yes, tear it all down, 
you will get a little pip boy or vault boy popping up telling you that it's confirmed and shortly after that a few things are going to happen one is you're going to be lifted into the sky into a kind of cinematic mode where you get to watch the settlement build its foundation level and this is going to scrap pretty much everything in the settlement there are some exceptions so any of the things that were reused from the vanilla game in the settlement will stick around but everything else is going to start getting scrapped you're going to fly around here and the purpose of the cinematic mode is not only because it's fun and looks cool uh, but also just because there's a lot of background activity that needs to happen and you need to stay t you need to stay put if you leave the settlement while all this is going on you could interrupt some of those things so this is just kind of something for you to do while you wait for that to go now the cinematic mode can take a little longer than it needs to like you can be stuck up for a full song cycle but as soon as you get that new city construction in the corner there you can actually force exit by opening and closing your pit boy and it will cut it short so if you're bored of flying around in the air listening to music you can hit that button to be sent back down to earth and your city plan is ready to go so the foundation level is just the very basic of a city and it's designed intentionally to look very scrappy it probably looks bad to some of you um, and is just a reflection of the start so what it's doing is outlining essentially where your settlers are going to start building so there's a lot of obvious nooks like this in front of me where you'll see that a plot is going to end up at some point point. and basically as your settlers move in they will place down shops and beds and other things in this space and start building it up then over time as enough settlers have moved in and have built enough plots the settlement will become eligible for leveling up now depending on the options you chose when you started your game during the wizard it may happen automatically or it may in involve something from you so I'm gonna start by just going over the requirements for leveling up here I'm just gonna give you the rough explanation of how you get that information and we'll go into more detail on that in a future video because I think a lot of you will have chosen for your first time through the automated options during the wizard in which case pretty much everything's just going to happen without you and you can just keep coming back to the settlement periodically to see what's changed so there's a few things that need to happen in order for a city plan to level up now if you've got HUD framework which I highly highly recommend you use when using some settlements because it gives you that nice meter set on the left which also has some information for your city plan so in the bottom left corner there you'll see a little vault boy icon and then it has the numbers one out of 10 that's telling you how many settlers you have out of the max supported by this particular level of the city plan so in hangman's alley the foundation level supports 10 people so one of the things that will need to happen before your settlement is eligible to level up is you will likely need to fill that up so you'll need to end up with 10 settlers here now that will happen naturally over time because all of these city plans include a recruitment beacon so they will slowly recruit without you having to do anything but you can obviously speed it up by sending settlers yourself from some of your other settlements next to that is a little city picture and it has L0, 0%. So L0, that means level zero, so it's not quite to level one. So we call L, the foundation, we call it L0 in the interface just to make it short and sweet there. And the 0% is how, how far along in time that you are to actually being eligible. So there's a few components that go into upgrading the city that a certain amount of time has to pass you have to have a certain number of settlers and then the third thing is that the settlement has to have enough junk in order to make the upgrade now they will collect this junk all on their own but you are well you can actually speed it up and if you go into the supplies here and click manage you will see at the top there it says handle supplies for hangman's alley so that will show the settlement name you're in and right underneath that is upgrade scrap collected so like I said this will build up on its own you don't have to do anything even if you play it on the most advanced options and have all the hardcore modes turn on they'll still collect some amount on their own and the more basic industrial plots you have in a settlement the faster that number will go up so that's the third requirement and like I said you can actually donate your own junk if you want to or donate your own scrap in order to speed up that collection so you need to hit 100% scrap collected that little meter in the corner down there the L0 that 0% needs to make it to 100% and you need to have in this particular level 10 out of 10 settlers so once all three of those conditions are met it will upgrade automatically unless you turn on the option to make it manual and I'll show you where you would go to do that so if you have manual upgrades on which is something I highly recommend for Xbox players or people with a low-end PC simply because city plans push past the build limit often and while many PCs can handle that no problem on Xbox and lower end systems as your save gets older and as you install more mods and your save gets bigger and bigger 
having too many objects inside of a settlement can cause your game to start crashing. So for some of you, you will end up leaving your city plans at level zero or level one to prevent that. And the best way to find out if your, if your system and save can handle it is to turn the upgrades on manual. Then you can make a save before you upgrade your city plan let it upgrade and then play around for a while. And if you find that things become unstable, you can just roll back and just leave that city not upgraded. And before we end this video, I will show you not only where the option to do that is, but also that option I mentioned earlier about turning off the leader requirement. So we'll cover those in a few moments here. Uh, but the last thing I wanted to show you was that if you click on the blueprint again, after you have a city plan already, you'll find some new information. First up, you have the led by Ada. So that will show you who is in charge of your settlement, who your current leader is. You will see the current level and then the percent to next level. So that level information, current level and percent to next level, that's the same information you would have seen on the HUD. If So if you're not using HUD framework, this is where you can get access to that information. And there's also one other piece of information that's useful from here that I'll cover is the view city details. This will bring up a sign that has some information. You can find out about who the designers were. So if you have a particular city plan you're especially impressed with and you want to go complement the designers you can find out who they are here or if you want to find more work from them for for example for some of the community city plans where you want to get more city plans from that designer this is how you'd find out who designed your particular city plan all right, now before we end this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of those options. Now I'm gonna show you them in MCM, but know that they are available in the City Manager's Holotape as well under a similar section. So the first one is that leader thing. So if you don't like the idea of having to commit your, your companions as leaders and you just want these cities to build anyway, go under City Building, you'll find Leader Required and you can turn that off. It is on by default under most of the wizard options. Then if you come down to the upgrade menu, you will find city upgrades and you can change that to manual so that you have control over those. And those upgrades are available to be done on the blueprint menu. If you activate the city plan here, there will be an upgrade city option when it's eligible. All right, guys, that should cover the basics of getting you up and running with city plans and watch out for additional videos going into more detail about things like leaders and about some of the advanced things you can do with city plans. Take care and enjoy the month.